Hello, I'm Jacqueline Polliff, and today we're going to be talking about harp strings, specifically how to figure out what type of replacement string to order. Strings can break from time to time, and when that happens, of course, you want to replace the broken string. The first step to that process is ordering the correct new string. And this can be a little bit confusing. There are actually two parts to it. One is the type of material that the string is made out of. Harp strings come in three different materials. There are nylon strings, which are a synthetic material. There are gut strings, which is all natural animal gut. And then there are wire strings, which are typically made out of steel, some kind of metal. And harps use different combinations of these three different materials. Some harps use all three materials on the same instrument. Some might only use one or two types. The other part to ordering a string is getting the correct diameter. So each harp string has a unique diameter. Even though these two strings look to be about the same, they're actually slightly different. So if you need to order, say, a nylon string, it's not enough just to know that you need a nylon string. You also have to know exactly which nylon string you want. Let's talk a bit more about the three different types of string, nylon, gut, and wire. One of the easiest ways to figure out uh, which type you might need is to simply go to the manufacturer's website and generally they have lists for each model of harp showing specifications for what type of string to use. Another great resource is um, harp supply companies. A lot of these also have similar lists on their websites, so you can select the type of harp that you have, and then they'll, they'll show you um, exactly what combination of nylon, gut, and wire you want to be using for your harp. You could also tell which type of string you need by examining the look and feel of the broken string. So here we have three examples. This is a nylon string, a gut string, and a wire string. The nylon string, as you can see, is very white and clear. And it's pretty bendy, but if you let go, it will spring right back into its original shape. The gut string is a lot more yellow. If you look really closely, you can see individual fibers within the string. That's because gut strings are made by twisting a bunch of individual strands together. And if you try and um, bend a gut string, it feels much more crunchy <laughs> than the nylon string. So you can actually bend it so much that it will crimp like that and stay in its position. It doesn't spring back the way nylon does. And then wire strings are pretty distinctive. They're silver and shiny, and they, they feel like metal. They're a little bit colder than either of these materials. Another way to determine what type of string you need is to look at how your harp is strung overall. This pedal harp is strung in a very standard manner. It uses all three types of strings, wire, uh, nylon, and gut. And the important thing to remember is that the strings are all put on in sections. So there's a section of wire strings from here to here, a section of gut strings from here to here, and a section of nylon strings from here to here. You would never mix it up and go wire, gut, nylon, wire, gut, nylon. Instead, they're all kind of in blocks. And as I said, this is a very standard stringing. On most harps, you use the wire strings for the longest and lowest strings, and then gut strings and nylon strings for the shorter and kind of medium strings. There's some choice in how you do your sections. So you could have a smaller gut section, say from here to here. That's also quite common. And then a slightly larger nylon section, say from here to here. But the important point to remember is that we have these different sections. And if you're looking at how your harp is strung, the point you really want to find is where the section changes, where one ends and the new one begins. Whenever you're trying to determine the point where the section changes, it's easiest to look up at the top of the strings where they wind around the tuning pin. Then you can use the wood as a backdrop for each string. So on this harp, you can see that the bottom string is wire, and then we keep coming up, up, up with more wires. When we get to this string, it's still silver and shiny. And then when we get to the next one here, it changes to a much more yellow color of string, and the texture changes as well. So that's our point where we change from a wire string to a gut string. Finding the point where you change from a gut string to a nylon string can sometimes be a little bit more complicated, both because the two materials are more similar 
and because usually you're looking at thinner strings, so it can be a little bit harder to see what's going on. If we um, look right here though, this string is a little bit more yellow than this one over here. It just has kind of a, a darker quality to it, especially if you look at it right here in front of the wood. And if you look very closely, you can see some little um, fibers running through it, and you do not have that for this white string over here. So this one is gut, and this one is nylon. This F string in between them is even harder to determine because it's colored, you know, it's been dyed. So it's really hard to see any fibers or anything like that since it's covered up. But if you look at it uh, very closely, you can see that it's just very smooth and kind of shiny in a way that these below here, even when they're uh, colored strings, are not. So this one is also a nylon string. Our point of change is here. This is a gut string, and then this next one is a nylon string. And finally, there's one variation with types of strings that I wanted to mention. If you have a very small lever harp like this one, then you might run across this. This harp is strung entirely with nylon. There are no gut or wire strings on it. But when we come to these bottom three strings, there's something a little bit different about them. These bottom three strings are what are called wound nylon strings. So that just means that they have a piece of nylon in the middle, and then there's another piece of nylon coiled or wrapped around the outside. And the easiest way to tell wound nylon strings from regular nylon strings is by the texture. So if I run my nail up and down this regular nylon string here, it's very smooth. But this wound nylon string, <laughs> you can hear the sound it's making because my, um, my nail is catching on those little coils. You can just feel a lot of texture on this string as compared to the smoothness of this string. So on some small lever harps, you see this variation of wound strings. And they can be just like these, with a nylon center and then nylon wrapped around the outside. Or you might see a wire center and then nylon wrapped around the outside. Now we're going to talk about numbering systems for strings. This is the other big area when it comes to figuring out what replacement string you need. As I mentioned earlier, each string has a unique diameter. Usually we call this the gauge of the string. So no two strings are exactly the same. And when you're ordering, of course you need to know what type of material, nylon gut or wire, but you also have to have a way to specify, to differentiate between individual strings. Some lever harp makers use a purely numerical system for numbering their strings. They call the topmost string, string number one, then the second one is two, three, four, and so forth and so on, all the way down the harp. So all you have to do in that instance is count up to whichever string is broken and then just refer to it by its number. The drawback to this system is that it's not universal. So if you switch to a different model of harp and maybe your topmost string is this one, then suddenly everything is shifted. Now this is string number one and this is string number two and so forth and so on. So although some lever harp makers do use this system, there is another more universal system that I think is a little bit more common. In this more universal system, you refer to both the letter of the string and which octave it's in. So uh, probably you know the way that the, the strings are laid out in terms of letters. The red string is the letter C, then it just goes in terms of a scale, D and E, then the black string is the letter F, and then it keeps going with the scale G, A, B, and then back around to C. So when you're determining the letter of the string, you do it just the same way you would when you're playing any sort of music on the harp, and that part is pretty easy. The system to determine which octave you're in works like this. Pedal harps used to have this E as their topmost string. So they made the first seven strings of the pedal harp the first octave. This would be a first octave E, first octave D, first octave C, first octave B, first octave A, first octave G, and first octave F. So then it just repeats, always starting on E, ending on F. So when we come here to the next E and go down to the F, this is all the second octave. Then we could go E to F again, third octave, E to F again, fourth octave, fifth octave, sixth octave down here, and then just three strings 
that are part of the seventh octave. Eventually, pedal harp makers added two more strings, this G and F up here, but they didn't want to change the way the system worked with everything beginning on E and ending on F. So they needed a new name for these two strings because first octave G and F are already taken by these two strings. So on full size pedal harps, where you have 47 strings like this one, and you have these top two strings, the G and the F, you call them the zero octave. In order for this system to be universal, then it doesn't shift depending on the size of harp that you have. For example, with this lever harp here, our topmost string is a C rather than the G that the pedal harp started with. And this C is a first octave C, then we'd have a first octave B, A, G, and F, but when we come to the E string, it switches to the second octave. So regardless of the size of harp, the octaves always go from E to F in order to keep the system universal. One thing that a lot of people do is they use middle C as a reference point within the system. So middle C is always a fourth octave C. And then you can just figure out your entire fourth octave surrounding that from the E to the F. And so then you could go up to the third octave, up to the second octave, or coming from your middle C, fourth octave, you could go down to the fifth octave and so forth. That's a nice way to check to make sure that you haven't gotten your octaves mixed up. Although a bit convoluted, this system does work fairly well because it allows you to be highly specific when ordering your strings. For an example, let's pretend that this string here had broken on your harp and you needed a new one. The first thing you would need to do is to determine the type of material needed. This one is a nylon string, so you would want to order a nylon string. And then next you'd look at the letter of the string. This is a B, so it would need to be a B string. And then finally, you would determine which octave it is in. So here we have our partial first octave from our imaginary E string up here to our F string here. And then we have our second octave here. And then the B string in question falls within our third octave. So you would order a third octave nylon B string. If by contrast this string down here broke, you can go through the same process. First you would determine the type of material. This is a wire string. Next, you would determine the letter. This one is an F. And then finally, you would determine the octave. So we have our partial first octave, second octave, third octave, fourth octave, and then finally, fifth octave. This F here is the bottom note of the fifth octave. So you would order a wire fifth octave F. One final aspect that I wanted to mention just briefly when it comes to ordering strings is the different brands of the strings themselves. So within the nylon strings, the gut strings, and the wire strings, there are competing manufacturers. I have a few examples. These are all nylon strings made by different companies. Gut strings might look like any of these. And here are a couple examples of wire strings. When it comes to the brands, I think the best thing that you can do is to simply follow the recommendation of your manufacturer. Or again, you could go to a harp music and string supply company website, and they will also uh, let you know what brand of strings is recommended for your particular make and model of harp. I hope that figuring out what replacement string you need goes smoothly. Good luck to you.